Okay, there. Now it should be. I didn't know I had to press record again. Okay. It says live plus record. Joe, can you check Facebook to see if we're live already? Oh, there it is. You see it? Yeah. Okay, so it's on Freedom Center Church, right? Yes. Okay, great. Good morning, Freedom Center Church. How is everybody doing this morning? Hey. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you to our, our families and our homes, our families that are here and are in this building. And we just want to come before God this morning and just give Him all the honor and all the praise that's due. We want to, yesterday was 4th of July. And we just want to, of course, first of all, thank our Lord and Savior for the freedom that he, gave, that he gave us when he died for us on the cross. When he rose and he resurrected and he broke those chains of death, that we are free and we are free in his name. So if everybody could just bow their heads. 
Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, oh God. Thank you for the country that we live in, oh God, that we are free to serve you, oh God, that we are free to worship you, oh God, that we are free to just walk through these doors, oh God, and come to your house with not with no, with no fear, oh God, of any repercussions, Lord, that we can come and we can shout your name, oh God. Shout to the, the name of the one who saved us. Shout the name of the one who freed us and who healed us and restored us and delivered us, Lord. We thank you for that, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you for the word that you have for us this morning, oh God. We've already received it. We haven't heard it yet. We've already received it, Lord God. We come with open heart and open mind. Lord God, just receiving that word in a for our lives, oh God, for our families. Lord, we declare right now, Lord God, we declare the blood of Jesus over each and every person here. We declare and we decree the blood, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every family member that is here, that is not here, that wherever they're at, friends and family, we declare the blood of Jesus over each and every person. We declare them protected. We declare them healed. We declare them delivered. If they're in the hospital, they're listening to us right now. In the name of Jesus, you are healed, you are restored, you are delivered in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your healing hand. We thank you, Father, for your healing hand. Lord, we just love you, we honor you, and Lord, we just want to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And everybody say,
without fear of, of being retaliated against and we're just so grateful that we live in this beautiful country that we have and, and we pray for those who don't have the freedom we have Father God and we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings that you make it you multiply it and you use it for your kingdom and for your glory and we just thank you for everything you're doing in Freedom Center Church everything you're going to continue to do with each one of our each one of our individual lives and we just give you all the praise honor and glory in Jesus name Amen Amen alright we're going to get right into it if you like message titles, I have one for you. It's called Resilience. Now, if you hear the word resilience, I'm sure you know what it means. I'm going to give you the actual definition. It means to spring back. It's a rebounding. And there's another term on there if you look it up on dictionary.com. There's another one that says, returning to the original form or position after being bent, compressed, or stretched. And... Let me ask this question. For those of you who are here, even for those of you at home, has there ever been a time where you were, let me see, let me see how to put this. Are you as close now as you ever was in your walk with Jesus? Are you in the position that you once used to be? Are you in a position where you can look at it and say, you know what, I'm not as close to Jesus as I used to be. My walk is not what it used to be. And maybe you've, I'll use this as an example, these descriptions here is under the definition. Do you feel like you're bent out of shape? Do you feel compressed? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel like there's, there's a weight on your shoulder? Or do you feel like maybe you're stretched too thin in your everyday life and, and your walk with Jesus? Maybe you feel like you can't serve him the way you should because maybe I'm stretched a little too thin. Maybe I've got too much on my plate. Well... Hopefully by the end of this message, you'll understand what it means to be resilient because I'm not making light of your situation, but we all go through things where we're stressed, where we're depressed, where, we're, where maybe we're stretched too thin, maybe we feel like our lives are getting a little bit out of shape. 
But that's where the resilient attitude, that's where the resilient characteristic comes in to be able to rebound, to be able to bounce back from, from whatever the situation is that's coming against us. And I'm going to use some illustrations this morning. One in particular I'm going to start with is Moses. And we're probably familiar with the story of Moses. Here's a man who was, who was uh, born into slavery in Egypt, rose to a, a prominent position, a high-level position, and uh, I'm going to read through, read through some of what he did. And after killing an Egyptian, he decided, you know what, I better get out of here. So he decides to flee so he, before he loses his life. <clears throat> and he might, eventually he found himself uh, face to face with an angel in a burning bush. And after that, he, he leads his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And, and that was after, of course, bringing plagues onto the country, which was directed by God. But here's a man who had resilience, a man who, who had all these circumstances, all these things coming against him, but he never gave up. He never, he never looked at what was going on in his, in, in his life, never looked at the situations or the, the trials that were set before him and said, you know what, I can't do this, I, I just give up. He, it wasn't the type of man that he was, and although he went through these traumatic events, he, no matter what the ordeal was that came against him, he continued to move forward with the mission that God had set before him. He understood what God had told him to do, and there wasn't anything that was going to stop him from doing it. Even as he's leading the Israelites, and picture yourself as being one of them, and you get to the Red Sea. You know you're being chased. You know that your life is on the line. You get to the Red Sea, and if you read the story, they were concerned. They were, they were like, well, Moses, here we are. What are we going to do? Surely they're going to catch up with us. They're going to kill us. We're all going to die. Moses never blinked an eye. He, he, because, and this is one thing I really want to get straight with you this morning, is God knew the full story. He knew the full plan. He knew what God had planned. He knew that, he knew that God had told him to deliver my people from Egypt. Amen. Now, he didn't know how it was going to happen, but he trusted God. So you get to the Red Sea, and we all know the story, that God opened the sea, they walked on dry land, and then, of course the sea killed the enemy. But at that moment, what if you were leading them? Or what if you're putting in a position to where you're leading people and, you're, and you get into this stumbling block or you get to this roadblock to where, to where you don't know if you know what the next step is? Or maybe this is the end of the line. Maybe whoever is following me, this is as far as I'm supposed to take them. Do you just stop? Do you give up? Or do you trust God that there's a, there's a bigger picture? And do you sit there and do you take time and pray and say, Lord, what is my next step? Because right now, it looks like I'm, I'm at a dead end. It looks like I can't go any further. Do you trust God? Do you see the whole picture? Or do you give up? It's good. It's good. Here's a man that walked the earth nearly 4,000 years ago. Delivered the Ten Commandments to the Israelites. And those same Ten Commandments are the basis of the laws in Western democracy today. And I say that to say this and be honest and for those of you watching at home what are you doing today that's going to be remembered 4,000 years from now I know that sounds like a crazy question to ask and believe me I, I get it I understand but you never know you never know what you're doing right now whether it's going to be remembered next year 10 years down the road or 4,000 years down the road you never know the impact you're going to have on people on society on, the, on your nation, I guarantee you, Moses had no idea that on July the 5th, 2020, that I'd be standing here talking about him today. He had no clue that he would go down in history as such a resilient man, as, as someone who, who would be remembered so many years away. So if you're, if you're truly following God, if you're truly doing what God's called you to do, you don't know the impact that you're going to have right now that could be remembered generations and generations down the way. But I guarantee you one thing, if you, if you don't, but I'll tell you this, if you're not standing for God, if you don't have resilience and you give up every time something hard comes against you, those things will not be in the history books. Those things will not be remembered 4,000 years from now. So Moses is, he's the man. He's the man of resilience. And here we are, you know, so many years later, 21st century, and we're still talking about him. Leaders are still, leaders and ministers and 
And those alike are still using him as an example each and every day to encourage people. Who knows who Helen Keller is? Helen Keller? Ah, I like that. Everybody's hands go up. I see that. All right. Helen Keller. I wasn't sure how many hands I was going to see. But uh, Helen Keller, she had a quote, and it's really amazing. Helen Keller said, Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it. I love that. And I didn't go looking for it. As I was studying through, it was just one of those things that, that came up. And, and I've read it before. I've heard it before. But I, when I was reading it as I was studying, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it. And it really took me to, really made me think about the day that we're living in right now. And I'm not going to get political. I'm not going to go down that road. But right now in society, there is suffering all around. Suffering, suffering, suffering. Everywhere you look and if you turn on the news, if, you, if you're on the internet, wherever it may be, you don't see good things. You don't see the good things that are happening. You really have to search for those videos or those, those stories. And, and, you, and I'll read one. I'll share it with my wife. We, we share good stories of things that we see and things that we witness. And, but for the most part, when you're looking online, when you're watching the news, it's not good stuff. But as Helen Keller said, although the world is full of suffering, it's also full of overcoming it. And I truly, truly believe that in this country we live in, there are more people overcoming adversities and overcoming suffering than there are those who are going through it. We just don't see it. You don't hear about it. But I truly believe that that's the, that's the, the situation. That's what we're going through. Because I believe that we as, as, as the American people, we're resilient. That's why we live in the greatest nation we live in. Because we're not quitters. We're not those who are going to give up. And whether you whether you are whether you're a believer, whether you carry a Bible and you believe what it teaches or not, the, the American spirit is a spirit of resilience. And I believe that if we're not careful, we can lose that. And I believe that the crazy things that we see going on is because of it, it, it's there's not just one answer to what's going on. There's not one I can't direct one particular issue or problem as to explain why we're seeing the things we're seeing. But I can guarantee you, if those people in the streets and those people who are riding and those people who are doing, you know, causing destruction and chaos and so forth, if those kids would have been taught at home to serve God, we wouldn't be seeing what we see. If we're doing our part as believers, we wouldn't be seeing what we see. Research indicates, it's actually proven, that individuals... With, who have a ratio of three times as many positive emotions to every one positive, to every one negative emotion in a daily basis is more likely to be resilient. Let me say that again because it's kind of complicated. Individuals who have a ratio of three times as many positive emotions to every one negative emotion on a daily basis is more likely to be resilient. In other words, if you're a negative person, if you live your life on negative emotions and your negative emotions outweigh your positive emotions, you're going to be a quitter. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be resilient. When things come your way, you're going to give up. Yeah. If, if, you go through, if you go through your day and you experience 40 emotions, this is, I'm simplifying the numbers. If you experience 40 emotions throughout your day, 30 of them need to be positive and no more than 10 negative. Yeah. And, that will, and that will give you a characteristic of a resilient person. Preferably a lower number than that. And so ask yourself, moving forward, ask yourself, when, how often do I experience negative emotions? And do I live a life of negativity? Do, do I just find the negative in everything? Ask yourself. Can I, can I take a situation that would otherwise be neutral or positive in some way, and do I see the bad in it? Or do I see the good in it? Hopefully your answer is you see the good in it. Because if you do, then that's the type of person who's going to be resilient. That's the type of person who's not going to give up when, when situations arise. Now, I'm going to give you another name, and I probably won't see a single hand go up. Dr. Donald Meichenbaum. <laughs> One person. He's probably lying. <laughs> Dr. Donald Meichenbaum is a, is a psychotherapist. A world-renowned psychotherapist. He is one of the co-founders co of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And he did a study. And the study is on resilience. 
And particularly the, the question that he posed was, what is resilience? Now, I don't have time to go over the whole thing. I read the entire study. It's incredibly interesting, to say the least. But what he did, he, he, one part of his study that he broke down was he gives five, uh, five descriptions of what he believes resilience is. And you have to understand that this guy took every possible angle you could think of to study what it, mean, what it meant to be resilient. So the first one, and I'm going to read, they're, they're not little short, it says resilience, they're not little short descriptions. So if you're taking notes, I'm not going to read slow so you can follow, but if you really want to know what it says, get with me after church. I'll send you a copy of my notes so you can, you can have it if you want it. But the first one, resilience, is the capacity of people to effectively cope with, adjust, or recover from stress or adversity. Excuse me. Second one, resilience is the process and outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences and the ability to rise above one's circumstances. The third one is, is uh, a study towards those who are in the military, so you'll, you'll catch that here. Resilience reflects the ability to confront and handle stressful life events, ongoing adversities and difficulties, and traumatic experiences both while deployed and also when reintegrating into civilian life. The fourth one, resilience reflects the ability to maintain a stable equilibrium and relatively stable healthy level of psycho psychological and physical functioning even in the face of highly disruptive, stressful, and traumatic events. And the last one has several different little bullets under it. It says re resilience reflects the ability to bounce back, to beat the odds, transform one's emotional and physical pain into something positive. We're going to touch on that in a minute. It reflects the ability to evidence a relatively stable trajectory of healthy functioning across time, and it reflects the ability to move, move from being a victim to being a survivor and even to becoming a thriver, adapting to whatever life sends, and for some, even evidencing post-traumatic growth. Have you ever heard, has anyone heard of post-traumatic growth? Yeah. Wow. I hadn't until I read this. Um, Post-traumatic growth, we're, gonna, we're just going to say PTG, is the ability to experience positive personal changes that result from the struggle to deal with trauma and its consequences. Amen. In other words, like a that. resilient person who exhibits PTG will not only go through a, a hard time or a hard situation, not only get through it, but will become a better person because of it. Amen. Amen. And that's what God's called us to do. He's called all of us to be that way. See, when we, when we have adversities, when things come against us, God doesn't just want us to make it through. Yeah. And we have to understand that God will allow things to happen in our lives because He wants to see how we react. He wants to see, well, what's their response going to be? Are they going to give up? Are they just going to barely squeeze through? Are they going to cry about it? Are they going to become a better person because of it? Will they learn from it? And that's what PTG really is, is post-traumatic growth. PTG also highlights the, that strengths can emerge through suffering and struggles with adversities. Individuals may develop a renowned, excuse me, a renewed appreciation of life and a commitment to live life to the fullest Valuing each day and improving relationship with loved ones. Resilient people exhibit PTG. Bernard Williams is an English philosopher, and uh, he quoted, he had a quote that says, Man has never made a substance more resilient than the human spirit. Amen. And I read that, I said, like, Wow, that's powerful. That's, yeah. There's nothing on earth more resilient than the human spirit. And when we can understand that, when we can, when we can understand what it means not just to be physically able to accomplish things, not when we can just psychologically make it through a situation, but when our human spirit encounters a situation and never, never folds, never gives up, never backs down, never even for a second thinks that it's time to give up, that's how God wants us to live. I don't know, and if there's any Bible scholars in here, correct me, but I don't know of a situation in the Bible where God said he told anyone to give up. I can't think of a single situation where God gave someone something to do or something to accomplish or a situation in their life, and God said, it's okay, just, just quit. Just give up. You won't find it. 
And when you think about someone who is resilient, I'm going to give you another example, a biblical example here, is Joseph. Now this then is, this is the comeback king here. Joseph, we know the story of Joseph. We've probably seen cartoons or we have a little cartoon book at home with it in there. And we understand the story of Joseph. But uh, this is a man whose his brothers planned on killing him. And ultimately they just, they sold him into slavery. So he gets sold into slavery in Egypt. And he, he's working for, for a man in Egypt who ends up putting him in jail based on a lie. And while he's in jail, his uh, true talent begins to come out. And he begins interpreting dreams for the other for the other convicts, the other inmates that are there in jail. And the word gets back to the ruler that, that he has this ability. And uh, the Egyptian ruler, he's, he, he's been having this dream of famine taking over his country or the kingdom. So he hears about Joseph, calls Joseph in to interpret the dream. And we all know the story. Joseph interprets it. So he's highly impressed. So he gives Joseph a, a position, a, a high-ranking position. He actually puts him in charge of the, the agriculture within the, within the kingdom. And he's responsible for distributing food. And lo and behold, who shows up? Joseph's brothers. It's been about 10 years since they sold him into slavery. And his brothers show up. And what does he do? Let me ask you a question. What would you do? <laughs> if your siblings wanted to kill you because they were jealous and sold you into slavery and then God promotes you, God promotes you, and then now you're responsible for distributing food and your hungry brothers come, the ones that wanted to kill you, the ones that sold you into slavery show up and they don't even recognize him. They don't even know who he is. And they show up. What would you do? Would you, would you be forgiving? Because he was in a position where he could have had them arrested. He could have had them killed if he wanted to. But he didn't do that. He forgave them. Not only did he forgive them, he had the brothers and dad move to Egypt to be with him. Yes, sir. Yeah. And when we read this story, we, we see not only, not only resilience, not only for Joseph to, to be able, because he didn't have to, he didn't have to tell anyone their dreams. He didn't have to do that. When he got called to, to the ruler to interpret his dream, he could have told him something wrong, could have interpreted it wrong. Could have, it, there's many things that could have gone wrong, many, many different ways he could have gone with it. But he did the right thing. And then God took him to another level, to another level. And Joseph had no idea that he would be promoted if he had interpreted this, this ruler's dream. He had no idea what was going to happen. But he didn't give up. And he says, you know what? This is the gifting that God's gave me. I'm going to use it. And I'll just trust God with the rest of it. And that's what he did. So he ends up becoming, you know, this, this person of, of prominence within the, within the kingdom. And given the opportunity to, to confront those who put him there. Not put him in that position, but put him in slavery. And he forgives him. So it shows us how to be resilient, but it also shows us that we have to have forgiveness as well. Because the, all the circumstances that I've mentioned so far, some of those circumstances are going to come from people that love you or that you love, people that you care about. There are going to be times where family members and, and those who are, who are very close to you might hurt you. And you've got to ask yourself, how do I deal with that situation? Do I show resilience? Do I show mercy? Do I show patience? Do I show love? Do I... Do I forgive the person that's attacked me? Do I forgive the person that's come against me? Or do I turn my back? Do I just forget about the situation? How do I respond? Joseph gave the best response. And he forgave. And he teaches us to recognize that we can determine what the future may hold. Unforeseen circumstances and conditions make up our existence, including our victories. Joseph also teaches us that holding grudges does not produce happiness. Do you know anyone that can hold a grudge? Anybody? A few hands go up. It's, it's, uh, you, you do your best to distance yourself from those type of people. 
And it's amazing. I've, I've known people that, uh, that, man, they can hold a grudge for years and years. I'm like, wow. But think about it. Those people that hold those grudges, how are their lives? How, how is their spirit? How, how are they walking every day? They're miserable. They're absolutely miserable. And if they would just let go, and if you're that person right now, if you feel like I'm talking to you and you can hold a grudge, let it go. Let that grudge go. Forgive, forgive or forget, move on. Because it will eat you from the inside out. And grudges can keep you from, from everything that God has for you. Yeah. Being, yeah. being the type of person that can hold a grudge, you will lose out on so much more. You'll lose sleep. You'll lose health. You'll lose friends. You'll lose family. You will lose out on so much. And it'll happen. It'll crumble around you without you even knowing it. Because it'll be happening little by little. Little by little, people start leaving your life. Because you're the type of person that holds a grudge. And you never know. You never know what God can do if you just let it go. And let go of that. Of that. And, it's, and how much happier life would be if you don't hold a grudge. Joseph, te Joseph teaches us to have an attitude of optimism. Oftentimes those who can hold a grudge are also the same ones who are pessimistic about everything. They, they see a situation and they don't see the, the good in it, as I mentioned earlier. It's, it's always the negative in everything. And those are the same type of people. And Joseph reminds us to be hopeful and to have faith when there is no reason to think that the situation or your surroundings are ever going to get any better. Have you ever been in that situation? Because I have. I've been in a situation where it doesn't look like things are ever going to change. It doesn't look like things are ever going to get any better. This is, this is the way it's going to be. I should just suck it up and deal with it. And just accept the fact that this is the, the card that, that I've been dealt and this is it. Nothing's going to change. And I've been there before. I've been in that situation before. And of course, when I was in that situation was when I was not putting Jesus first. But as long as I'm putting Jesus first, I've never even come close to experiencing that. I've never come close to a part where I don't think that, that my surroundings can change. I don't think that my circumstances can change. And a lot of times God's waiting on us to change our circumstances. A lot of times God's got the doors wide open and we're stuck because we're comfortable with the circumstances. We're comfortable with the situation we're in. And we don't, or we're, or we're just don't, we're too complacent. We don't want to change. Some people don't want to change. I've, I've ministered to people in the past, no, no one recently, but I've ministered to people in the past that come for the same thing over and over and over. And don't get me wrong, I'll be there every time. But at some point, I'm going to pull away from you. Because if you're not going to listen to what I tell you and you're not going to make an effort to change, mm -hmm. then I've got other people that are willing to listen. Yeah. And I can go minister to those people. Yeah. And there's the scripture. Yeah. And, that is, and, and that's, not me being, that's not me being hard or difficult or, or mean in any way. There's scripture that backs that up and I'll have to find it. But it, it, the scripture tells you, you know, you help someone, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, you help them, you help them. But at some point, if they're not willing to receive your help, you have to let them go. Every week, prior to this COVID-19 thing, every week Christians have gathered at churches. And all over the world, people are gathering at churches, hearing stories of, like the ones I gave you, Moses, Joseph, hearing these stories of characters in the Bible as inspiration, as teaching us how to, how to have a, a resilient characteristic. And these people in these, in these stories are going through things that you and I have never experienced. But that doesn't mean that just because you're not experiencing the same thing they're experiencing that you can't get through whatever it is you're getting through. And the characters in these Bible, oftentimes they're able to renew their lives no matter what situation they're going through. And some of these situations are not only, not only physically and spiritually demolishing, but, but they're just situations that you and I, if we were to face today, I don't know if we would make it through. But we, but we have to understand that we have, a, we have a God that sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. So that whatever it is, whatever the situation, if we will humble ourselves, if we'll humble ourselves and we'll seek out and, and we'll reach out to Jesus and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I want to be resilient. I want to be able to get through. I want to show that I can fight through whatever it is I'm going through. If I can do that, if you can help me, Lord, open the doors and I'll walk through them. Amen. 
But you don't have to wait for some traumatizing event to happen in your life to build a resilient character. Hopefully, some of what I'm saying today can help you do that. Hopefully, some of what we're going through, what we're talking about this morning, whether it be the examples of Moses or Joseph, or maybe the, the, some of the things I read from the study, from the doctrine, whatever it may be, if it can teach you that you, you can have the characteristic of a resilient person to get through whatever situation, that is my purpose this morning. Because... I look at statistics, and I love statistics. I think if if done correctly, um, they're accurate. And and I I trust statistics if done accurately, and they don't lie. Two plus two will always be four. If if you're doing, if if you're calculating some statistic and it's done correctly, it won't lie. And I say that because statistically, Christians in the U.S. are diminishing, number-wise. Less and less people are going to church. Less and less people are evangelizing. Less and less people are are getting out in the streets and talking about Jesus. I saw, this was just the other day, and I wanted to pull over and and see what was going on. I want to be nosy. I want to be one of those people. But the reason why, as I was coming down the expressway crossing over Ware Road, right on top of Ware Road was a man who had a big, giant cross. You see? Okay. Yeah, that big. Was it on TV? Oh, oh, okay. Carrying a big giant cross and had like a wheel on the back of it, so it would roll, right? But the cops were there. There was like four or five cops, all parked on top of the thing. Now I don't know why. I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that they weren't harassing the guy, but I wanted to see why. What is, what is this guy doing? What is he hurting? He's not hurting anyone. He's probably trying, just doing his best to get the message out. You know. There's a guy on uh, 495 and 23rd, stands there with a Bible, you know, and at least he's doing something. I can't judge the guy. I don't know if he's, maybe he's not all there or maybe he is. Not for me to judge, but the man's got a Bible. He's willing to tell you about it. What are you doing? You know? And so, you know, we, a lot of people make fun of Jehovah's Witness, but man, I got to give them credit. They're out there. They're out there. Their efforts, their efforts are there. We're not putting that same effort in. Their, their, their beliefs and their theology is, is off course, but, but the efforts are there. You know? Are you going to random people talking to them about Jesus? Because the Jehovah's Witnesses are, the Mormons are. They're doing their part, and if we're not doing our part, it's only a matter of time that the ones who's working the hardest are the ones who are going to win. <laughs> so, you know, and so uh, I don't believe that, I believe we're a long ways from that, but are we doing our part? As a minister, I've been blessed to, to be able to, to work with individuals and to speak to people and try to build their character and to try to teach them to be resilient because oftentimes when people come to me, with the situation, that's really what they need is they need the resilience to get through. Yeah. They need direction, they need guidance. And I'm, I'm not a licensed counselor, but I'll do my part. I'll do what I can to help people and to minister to people. And I had a call, I got a call on Friday. I was at work and uh, my phone rang. And the, the area code was 601, which is Mississippi, which happens to be where I'm originally from. As Eric 601, underneath it said Jackson, Mississippi. Now, I'm not going to give you too much information. But I saw that, and my, my initial reaction was, it's probably just a scam call. That's my initial reaction. It's probably a scam call or something. My insurance is expired or whatever, you know. Or my, they want to pay off my student loan debt. And, uh, and that was my initial reaction. But then I was like, okay, I've got a cousin that lives right next to Jackson. And maybe it's him. You know, I've got his number saved, and maybe he's gone from another number. You know, all these things are running through your head in the first couple of rings. But then, I, but then I felt God talking to me and said, answer the phone. And so, so I picked up the phone, said hello. And I didn't answer at Freedom Center Church. I just said hello. And, uh, and the guy says, is this, is this Freedom Center Church? I said, yes, it is. I'm sorry. And he goes, this, is this Pastor Vargas? I said, no, this is, this is Pastor Tim. I'm an associate pastor with Freedom Center Church. And he says, do you have a moment to talk? I said, yeah, I do. And I was in I was in H E B on 495 in Conway, not not near no, near by my house. 
I was like, yes, I do. And so I actually walked out. I walked outside. And I'm not going to give you the guy's name, and, and I'm not going to tell you what we talked about. But this guy was a minister. Been in ministry for, I'm not even going to tell you how long. A long time. And he had, he had gotten to a point, and then there's a situation that's taking place in his life. And he got to a point where he had minister friends because he's been in the ministry for so long. He's got dozens and dozens of friends. But the situation he was going through was so embarrassing that he didn't want to talk to any of them. He didn't want to open up to them. He didn't want anyone to know what was going on. And so he began praying. And lo and behold, he, it was led to our number, to my number. And, and I answered the phone and you know, I'm talking to the guy. And he's telling me what he's going through and what he's experiencing. And, and, I, and I'm, at first I'm like, well, how do, I even, how do I even minister to this guy? You know, this guy's been in ministry longer than I have. He should know <laughs> what to do. And so, and so we talked. We had a really amazing conversation. And it was more of, more of just like a friendship than it was me actually ministering to him. Because everything I said, he would finish my sentences. Everything I said, he was finishing. He was finishing my sentences, everything. Every, every scripture, whatever it was I was talking to him about, he was finishing everything I was saying. But it was just God putting us together. And I'm not going to tell you what we talked about. But at the end, he said, you know, when I was looking, when I was looking for someone to call, because I was going through the, God he gave me a word. As I was praying, God gave me a word, and he said that word was freedom. He goes, I need freedom from this situation that I can't get away from, this, from this thing that's got a hold of me. I needed freedom from him. So he just he typed in freedom in, in, the, in the search bar. And then he's typed in, he was looking for churches, looking for churches. And then he, he, he was led to Freedom Center Church, but it wasn't this Freedom Center Church. It was like two other Freedom Center Churches. And he called two other churches, and they didn't answer and then he called this one, and I answered. Amen. And, and he tells me, and he, t- he told me that he called two other churches and they didn't answer. And I said, you know what? I believe, I believe that the, you were ordained by God for the two of us to talk today. I, b- I believe with all my heart that we were meant to speak together. We were meant to Amen. speak today. Amen. And we had this amazing conversation. Yes, God. And by the end of it, we, we prayed. I prayed and he prayed as well. He prayed for us. He prayed for all of you. You know? Amen. And we had this amazing conversation, and uh, I have no doubt that we'll we'll keep in touch. And but it was amazing. And in this time that we're going through right now, this shouldn't mean anything, but it does. That man was black. He didn't care that I was a white guy. He didn't care who was on the other end. He needed someone to talk to. It didn't matter what color my skin was. And I didn't care what color his was. But that was something we talked about in our conversation. Was how divided, and and I don't want to get political, but how divided the media wants everything to be. And, but we're not like that. If you watch TV, you'll believe that the whole nation is racist. That we all hate each other. And we don't. And we're not like that. We're not those type of people. And we had this amazing conversation. And then by the end of it, we prayed with each other. And we hung up the phone and said, you know what, I'll keep in touch. And, we, we, and I had no doubt that we will. But I believe that this man is going to get through whatever it is he's dealing with. Because he showed resiliency. And he reached out. And he'll make it through. Ecclesiastes 7.14 says, enjoy prosperity while you can, but when hard times strike, realize both come from God. So don't just be happy with God when, when you're prosperous and when things are going good. Yeah. Understand when bad times come, it could just be seeing God seeing how you're going to handle the situation. Yeah. Are you going to get through it? Are you going to be persistent? Yeah. Are, you going to, are you going to give up? Yeah. Or are you going to make it through? One of my favorite quotes from a a man you may have heard of, named Winston Churchill, you may have heard of him. He says, the pessimist 
sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. And I love that quote. Because it really tells you how you're going to handle a situation. When a difficult situation comes, when something comes to your life, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to see it as an optimist or are you going to see it as a pessimist? Are you going to see the negative in every situation that comes towards you or are you going to see the positive in everything? Can you take a negative situation and turn it into a positive situation? And I can tell you with God on your side, every situation that you face, you can, you can turn it into something positive no matter what it is. Because there's nothing too big. There's nothing He can't handle. There's, nothing, there's no situation you're going through that He can't, can't take care of. But we have to put him first. You know, as a church, I don't think we are where we used to be as a church. The church in a whole, as I mentioned earlier, is not doing what we're supposed to be doing. But as Freedom Center Church, we're, we're blessed. We have amazing pastors. We have amazing members. But, and I know right now it's difficult because we have, you know... We have this situation with, with the COVID-19. But when this is over, we, we've got to get a fire under our backsides. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we've got to get back to work. Okay. We've got to get back to, to where we used to be. And I look around and, and a lot of people who are here right now were, were with us from the very beginning or very near the beginning. And there was a time when we were just, we were moving. We were boom, 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 boom. Moving and moving and moving. And right now, you know, situations are keeping us from doing that, you know, in terms of, of where we meet here. But we shouldn't be slacking. We shouldn't be lacking. We should be out talking to people. Amen. You've got a mask on, they've got a mask on. I can talk to you from six feet. We can still minister to people. You know? We can still minister. But we've got to get that, we've got to get that fervency back. The fervency that we once had. The fervency we had when we were building, a, we were... We were on fire when we were on Tom Landry, you know, just truly on fire. A little bitty place about the size of the stage. And we were all in there crammed together, but we were on fire. We knew, we knew God had a big plan for us. And I think in, in some way we've become a little complacent. And I don't want to be that way. We've got a beautiful church. We're, we're in a situation now where we can do more things and we can do more things financially. And, and I think we're really, we're starting to get there. This, this COVID-19 has kind of kicked us a little bit. But we're going to get back to where we were. But we have to do it individually as well. It can't just be, can't be all Pastor George's job, Pastor Celia's job, or any, anyone else I can name. It can't be, can't be our youth pastor's job. They can't do it all. We have to all do our part. So, let's all stand. I know I had a short message for you this morning, but... I really hope I really hope you were encouraged in some way. I hope those of you watching at home were encouraged. Man, I wish I had the words to speak what's running through my mind. You ever have that those thoughts where a million different words are running through but you can't put them all together? That's how I, that's how I feel right now. There's a million things running through here that I wish I could convey right into the camera and to those of you who are here. Of, of what it means you're stronger than you than you don't Amen. you are strong that's the best way I can put it you are stronger than you know you are don't give up whatever the situation if you've got if you've got kids loved ones your family members love them And whatever situation you're facing, maybe right now with this, this situation we're going through, maybe you've lost your job. It's not the end. Maybe, you, maybe God's got a better plan for you. Amen. Amen. You think losing your job is bad? Like, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make it? God's got a bigger plan for you. Amen. He's got a bigger plan. That job that you had before that you lost, He's going to give you an even better one. Amen. But you gotta be, you got to be optimistic. you got to believe He can. That's right. Amen. Right if, if you're going through some type of sickness, you're, you're going to make it through. Amen. you got to be resilient. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I mean, I've got all these things running through my head. Maybe I can put them down and, and have them for you next time. Yes. 
But let's pray. Father, we thank you for the, the word that you brought forth today. We thank you that as believers and even those those within those who are listening, those who may not be believers, Father God, that we carry a resilient spirit. That there is no situation, there's nothing that can come against us that we cannot handle. That we can not only not only get through this situation. But be a better person. Become better because of it. There's no, there's no enemy. There's nothing that can come against us that can knock us down. There's nothing that can come against us that can keep us down. We are resilient. We will bounce back from whatever situation tries to get the best of us. We are overcomers. We are resilient. We are a resilient church. We are resilient people. More than overcomers. Holy shit, dude. Yes, he did. And Father God, I just know it, and I feel, man, I really wish I could get everything out of my head that I want to get out. But I really feel that, that we're going we're gonna to make a difference, not only within this community, but with, within every, every surrounding area that we have here. Not because Freedom Center Church wants to be well known, not because we want our name to be out there, because it's what you call us to do. I don't need any recognition. I don't care if anyone knows my name. I don't care if people know the name of Freedom Center Church. As long as they know the name of Jesus. Yes. That's what I want people to know. Yes. Lord, give us, give us ideas. Give us, give us ways to reach out to people during this, during this pandemic that we're going through. During this, this time where we've been you know, isolated and separated. We can make phone calls. We can reach out to our loved ones. We can reach out to people. We can still do something. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the time you give us to come together. Until we meet again, we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We have a few announcements. We have a few announcements. Uh, I'm going to step away. My wife's going to give you a few announcements, and I will be right back. Good morning, Freedom Center Church. We are so excited with the things that are going on and happening with what God is doing here at Freedom Center Church. Today, starting at 4 o'clock, we have Heartstrings Dance and Creative Arts Ministries with Engaging His Heart Creative Play Session. It is led by our dance director, Maribel Tharp. Youth and adults are from 4 to 5 p.m. And children in elementary grade, kinder through fifth, is 5 to 5.30. We are here at Freedom Center Church, 1325 West Minnesota Road in Farm. Following that tonight, we have Break Free Student Ministries. Starting at 6 p.m., these are for junior high and high school level students. And service begins at 6 p.m. Their series right now is called Identity, You Redefined. Amen, amen. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us online. If you have any prayer requests, you want to just drop us a line, you can put it in the comment box there. And uh, we'll be glad to pray with you. If you have any other needs, maybe you don't want to put it there, give us a call. And we'll be glad to pray with you and uh, minister with you and be there for you. If uh, our doors are open, you can come. We have certain guidelines we have to adhere to, but, uh, but we're open. Come join us. Sunday is 10 a.m., Wednesday 7 p.m. And uh, hopefully we'll see you then. If not here physically, then join us online. Thank you. God bless.